Um, here is Lance Geschwente. Here is Sam Bilain. We are open parallel, and then uh, we will talk a little bit of Intel's reading building blocks into Facebook's hip hop. These are our names, and uh, essentially, this talk will discuss what are we aiming to do as a startup, as a business. So we have a model. At the same time, why we are working in this area, multi-core and parallel computing, and which are the huge opportunities that we we saw around. Uh, that we didn't just woke up one day and say, oh, let's do a project with TVB into hip hop because it's 30 degrees Celsius. So it's a process that we had from some time. And uh, the most interesting part of what are we aiming, a part of telling you the, about the project, it's to inviting you to join us, building uh, more about the specific project or other projects that we have in the pipeline. So thank you very much for coming. Welcome. We have these are a couple of white papers that we are you can download it from the website, but we have it in hard copies here too. I already distributed a few of them and you can pick them from a chair that are on the on the door. So again, welcome everyone and hello to everyone who is watching on the streaming. Hello, mom. So, <laughs> hola Esteban. That was real, that's my son. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of intro about what is this multi-core. I mean, in all the years that I've been around in this uh, environment, just to call it something, you find three kinds of people. The ones that uh, have absolutely no idea about what is this, but just read one or two words. Then the ones that are a little bit aware and are going through it. And then the ones that have been playing with this for the last 40 years or more. So we will give a little bit of context about what's the process that brought us here. And uh, then go straight to the specific presentation, which is all in the white papers. And hopefully we will have an open conversation with all of you about what we can do together and what we are aiming to do ourselves too. So what's the problem, the generic big problem that's happening in multi-core and why, why, why are we talking about this? Well, it's simple. Things change. Things constantly change. I mean, you build something once, and then you expect that that stuff will last forever. I was planning to do a little bit of quiz that if you are able to tell me where is this, I will give you something, but that's... Ah, okay. <laughs> so, okay, we know that certain things don't last forever. Now, which are the options about these sort of things? You can simply choose to, okay, I don't care, I ignore, I put my head in the sand. It's, uh, it's an option. Some people just have fun ignoring that. Uh, okay, good luck. Uh, others are saying, okay, I have this problem, but if someone from the Moore's Law, someone will help me. So I will just sit and wait for help. The standard help that I need could come, I don't know, from everywhere. So you can wait for help. Not sure if good news or bad news. Not sure if that help will come. So you can go and discuss in a committee or have a board meeting or round table. And <laughs> raise your hands how many times you have been sitting in a board meeting like this. And you choose who you can feel. <laughs> so. Probably the only one who is hating this photo is my daughter sitting there. Now, where is this? Aha! <laughs> I will tell you later. So, providing that the solution of this multi-core problem is not simple, it's better to aim high. As high as you can in this earth. So, aim high. You know where is this. <laughs> so, and if you're aiming high, Let's think about creative things. 
And to be honest, things come in any shape from anywhere. And that's uh, one of, part of the message, that we need to expect solutions of any kind from anyone. And in this time, I heard a lot of people, I did this in 84, I did this in 77. Look at these guys. Maybe they have solutions, because parallelism is out there. It's normal. It's intuitive. It's anywhere. So it's even there. This is the 101 in the Bay Area. So uh, we come from the New Zealand, the South Island of the New Zealand. We have one lane bridges, which means that if someone doesn't stop, then the other, we have problems. So parallelism should solve a lot of problems. But parallelism has some problems too. You need to take care with it because you have problems in the same 101. So you learn it here. If you don't take care, you have problems, and as happened. Where is this? Wanaka. So before you go for help somewhere else, before you go asking for people that you think that they have the right options or even big money, which could be in this address, is anyone been there? Yeah. <laughs> OK. So just for your, um, sorry, not sure. Oops. All these names are not dentists, are venture capital, Sequoia is there, everyone. So my message is that this multi-core and parallel problem won't solve if we do not join forces. So this is not a proprietary solution that will solve or just one community. There are different options, and these options can be good for anyone. Where is this? <laughs> OK, so for the other class of people who uh, already has certain awareness, I recommend a couple of papers that are freely available. Uh, if you just browse for this title from David Patterson, it's, it's reasonable download, and uh, you don't even need to pay for it. But what I love is the synthesis of the problem. And uh, I'm glad that mm, I can introduce myself. By definition, I'm an entrepreneur. I've been on many areas in the industry. My first venture was a mathematics academy. I had a dot com. At certain stage, I even have a venture capital firm. But the point is that as an entrepreneur, there is a gap in the market. There is a problem. It's not only a technical problem. There is not only a code. It's a business opportunity. So this paper gives some hints on many directions. And even a more technical paper, maybe some of you already heard about these guys. These are classic hits. So uh, this paper tells about a number of solutions that have been already there for a few decades. So this is what I call my introduction about the problem. So let me tell you a little bit about who are we. We are just a startup. Uh, but we are formally incorporated, which means that we pay taxes. Uh, and I use the word ecosystem just to uh, talk about all the friends that surround us, which are in the industry, which are in academia, which are in the community, which are developers, which are in the investment area. So. Um, because you don't have a simple single market that you need to point to, you play with different friends. And we started some time ago. That was a company that we started around the Niagara, the Netra division, the Netra data plane system. And we did a lot of things with Sun Microsystems. And the Otago University in Dunedin, where LCA was in 2006, uh, become thanks to our and there was the first open spark center of excellence outside the United States. So the, the chancellor was very happy that you, you had a banner of Otago University with Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, but it's not a huge merit, it's just very few people doing this. 
we went to Santa Clara to the Multicore Expo a couple of times. So those were the days. And we even were invited from time to time to go to the NBA because you know. So, and uh, there is a subtle basketball place there. The funny thing is that this guy was a director of uh, major architecture division of Sun. So the rest of history. So when a big ship implodes, the small ones are a little bit solider or just imploded with them. So later we used that expertise with some help of New Zealand government. Another project was a good opportunity to uh, create more awareness about what are we aiming to do around multicore with the community in New Zealand and Australia. And in the last, in this couple of LCAs, we are organizing this uh, mini conf, which is a very, very good way to uh, be in touch with this community. So I wanted just to do this intro about, as I say before, we didn't wake up a, a week ago and decided let's do something on TVB and hip hop. But if we have time after Lenz talk, maybe we can discuss openly. So I will pass to Lenz and he will give the story about what is, what are we talking about? Thank you. So we heard a lot about parallel programming. And um, I want to take you to something entirely different for a while, and then we come back. Um, hip hop is um, a project that started out of Facebook because of the need that they had a couple of servers, probably a couple of hundred, maybe a couple of thousand, um, that ran PHP and tried to render Facebook.com. And they had some issues with page loading times and page rendering times and all those kind of things. And they're probably the, the largest caching farm worldwide in the moment. But they really, really tried to get the page rendering time down. So what they tried to do is um, they looked around the market a bit and um, saw that there are a couple of guys actually doing PHP to C++ compiling and um, looked into that a bit further and took a couple of those ideas and took a couple of other ideas and came up with this thing that um, compiles a subset of PHP down to C++. And that thing is called hip hop. Very hard to Google, as I heard earlier. <laughs> Try hip hop PHP. That probably gives you <laughs> more hints. So hip hop is really a, C a PHP to C++ compiler um, that takes your PHP code, spits out C++ that you can then compile with GCC and, and run. Um, the, the thing that is a bit different about um, hip-hop is um, that you can't just take your PHP code one and, and, and drop it onto the hip-hop engine and, and hope that it compiles. Um, they've uh, skipped a couple of core um, language features just to make it easier for them to, to come up with a compiler that is performant enough and has um, not um, this amount of side effects um, or things that are really, really hard to implement in C++ because the concepts are simply not there. Um, and they stuck with um, PHP 5.2 um, and didn't really make the transition to 5.3 yet. But um, the subset that is there compiles really, really nicely. It's just important to know that it is not a drop-in replacement that you can just take it, throw in, and expect that everything works. So. Why, why, why is hip hop interesting, or why should we bother? Um, the amount of um, resource consumption that you can re uh, save by, by compiling your code down, your normal PHP code down to C++, is around. Depends on the on the region you're applying it to. Obviously, there is code that compiles better down to C++ and optimizes better than others, but it's around the area of 50 to 70 percent resources that you can save. Um, Facebook got rid of a lot of servers, or not rid, but <laughs> could use a lot of servers for other things suddenly because they started to use hip hop more and more. Um, what that means also is obviously less power consumption, less administrative overhead, and all those kind of things. Um, if you're running a larger shop, power consumption and things like that is suddenly a problem. If you run one server, yeah, probably the benefits are not as big. Um, so the, um, the performance um, aspect is, is one of the big aspects. Another 
aspect that we were more interested in is um, suddenly threading starts to work because um, hip hop can do threading, um, whereas PHP's threading support, not really. Um, so we tried to, to come up with um, some way of, of playing with hip hop and trying to get familiar with hip hop. And one of the popular projects that you often pick is WordPress because it's readily available, it's widely used. Um, so we started um, taking WordPress and apply a couple of patches and see if we can compile it on hip hop. And we were not the only ones, there were a couple of other ones. And in the meantime, there is a really, really well maintained patch set um, for WordPress. Um, and uh, there is even, uh, not all of the patches, but a lot of the patches went into upstream. So WordPress more or less runs out of the box on, on hip hop in the meantime. So hip -hop, uh, WordPress is really, really interested in, in getting full hip hop support for, for it. So they're actually constraining themselves to, to a subset of, of the functionality in PHP just to get it running on hip hop out of the box. Um, an interesting thing is hip hop has two components. Either you compile it down statically and, and run it as, as a binary, or there is a just-in-time compiler called HPHPI. And for development especially, HPHPI is really, really nice because you don't have to compile, see where it breaks, go back, fix your code. It's a very, very iterative way of, or, well, the PHP way, really, <laughs> um, to develop. Um, and it makes it way faster to, to just test out stuff. Um, our patch set is uh, on GitHub, as well as other patch sets that are on GitHub for WordPress. And um, if you're searching around either in our repository or just on WordPress, uh, for WordPress on GitHub, there are a couple of folks of, of the same core patch set that then kind of went through them. We tried to measure what, what uh, hip hop can, can give us in, in terms of running it on a, on a standard Apache setup and then running it on, um, on hip hop. And the, the, the standard LAMP stack that we used was just a virtual machine running in virtual box um, on a standard laptop with two cores in it. Um, and we, we just tried to, to push it as fast or as hard as we could. We used um, Zing, Zung, sorry, Zung as uh, the, the stress testing tool. Zung is really, really cool if you want to do some sort of slash dot effect things or, or dig attack things where you have um, a load that is slowly building up and then a peak and then a, a load that is ebbing uh, out again. So it can really flood, um, flood a web server very, very nicely. Um, and not only with, with kind of hitting it and hoping that you get a response, but with really defining a path through the website that a user would actually take. So if you're, if you're doing stress testing on your website, Zong is, is really cool. Written in Erlang, other passion of mine. Um, so we set up a Zong task um, that had about 250 users um, stressing the system from one user arriving at a second to every quarter of a second a new user arriving and so on. So it really built up a load very fast and then kind of maintained it and um, hold it for, for a couple of minutes. And um, we, we thought like 250 users is probably a fair amount of, of users. We can probably push it that far. And sure enough, we pushed it against our VMs and they just swapped to death and nothing really happened anymore. And we pushed it a bit too far. So our expectations of um, how, how far we can push um, the just really out of the box, it was not optimized. It was out of the box LAMP stack. Yeah, broke it horribly. We, we tested it with lower numbers, but um, that, was, that was kind of the interesting number for the next experiments then. So we had actually, obviously, working tests as well. But um, yeah, the, the hip hop stack outperformed the, the LAMP stack in that respect that it was still responsive. It didn't crash. Um, it went through. And um, we actually got results, which were the graphs we are showing in the white paper as well. This is roughly how it looks like if you run a dig attack against against a virtual machine that runs um, HP, HP, um, 
HPHP, so the hip-hop engine, really the compiled version. Um, but we also uh, really only measured uh, the, the page rendering. So the, um, the task that we set up uh, didn't request all the static files like CSS, um, images, all those kind of things. Um, so we really only uh, focused around um, testing the performance of the, of the PHP engine itself. Slight digression, TBB. Um, we've been talking a lot about parallel programming before, and um, TBB is a library that uh, aims to make parallel programming really, really straightforward. We all know it isn't, but at least it makes it a bit more, a bit easier to, to deal with memory management, with locking, um, with programming towards more than one CPU with a couple of constructs that you can use. It's an Intel library, it's open source, and it's not only running on Intel hardware. So it is written in a way that you can actually define different backends um, for, for different processing architectures. So it is written in a modular way, um, and it supports all major architectures in the moment. I think they're still working on the ARM um, port, but um, all other major architectures should be working in the moment. Um, so, our idea was to put TBB into hip hop or extend the TBB functionality in hip hop because it offers those wonderful constructs for parallel programming and it was already used in hip hop for memory management um, and to get, the, um, to get the threading synchronization right already. So, our our first kind of aim was um, to look which commands we could pick out of TBB to, to, imp uh, to improve the performance of the parallel performance of hip hop and ultimately of WordPress. And we picked Parallel 4 for a, for a quite straightforward um, way to map uh, for loops in, in PHP onto something that runs on several threads on several CPUs in, in the real on a real machine. And um, it turned out it is, it's not been that hard to, to implement uh, new, langu uh, new language constructs into the hip hop engine. It is not that hard to extend the, the language set that hip hop understands. And, um, and therefore the, the, the PHP language that, that hip hop can compile. Uh, so that first thing getting TBB into, getting this parallel forward TBB construct into hip hop was actually pretty straightforward. And um, the next thing was a bit more work to get um, this parallel four construct into the TBB source. So we hacked a couple of four loops that had no side effects that could be parallelized. Um, and um, yeah, I ran a bit into problems with the fact that we can only use PHP 5.2, uh, so we couldn't use a couple of the PHP 5.3 features that we would have loved. But um, all in all, it turned out to be a workable thing. Then we got um, patched uh, WordPress compiled with our new language constructs and with our new for loops. And um, turns out it was worth the effort. Um, we the, we, we did a lot of testing and we, we stressed it from, from different angles. But we, we found of, uh, that we got um, about between 100 and 200 megabytes of less memory consumption, roughly. We got um, the whole test suite running in, uh, in considerably less time. I think it was in the end uh, around between uh, the, the normal run was about seven minutes and um, the, our optimized one was about five or six minutes in, in, on average. So we really got, got a considerable speed up. We got um, a, definite, um, bet a definitely better result in the page served, uh, pages served in parallel. Um, we had on the unoptimized version about six pages served in parallel. On the um, optimized version we went up to seven. So there was a, a considerable difference between um, 
the, the normal standard hip hop version and our hip hop version with the parallel full construct. This is how the graphs look like. Um, the thing we, we kind of found out in, in that whole process was that TBB is really easy to, to use for, for writing parallel stuff, whatever it is. Um, it, is, it makes it really, really easy for, for C and C++ programmers to, to actually get stuff done on, on multiple CPUs in, in a multi-threaded environment. And it was a really, really good fit for hip hop. It was in there already for man memory management, so we, we really only had to extend it in terms of um, hooking our, our custom commands in it. And um, the, the speed up we got out of it compared to the standard PHP running on a LAMP stack to hip hop and then to our optimized version of hip hop was a really, really big gap. And if you look at that for um, deploying a larger setup where um, things like power consumption, things like um, resource consumption in terms of having 50 servers or having 100 servers makes a real difference, um, I think hip hop is a, is a really strong contender to, to jump in there and kind of get those resources down. And um, the other thing we, we um, found out is that hip hop is a, is a very, very interesting framework that can be hacked in various ways and can really be adopted to the needs that your specific application has. So it doesn't fit everything, obviously. There is corner cases where hip hop really just scales minorly better than, than a standard PHP stack. But um, for a lot of um, purposes, hip hop can definitely speeds things up and can be hacked in a way so that it even speeds it more up for, for, the, for the code base you have. So I'm roughly ready for questions, roughly ready for... No, but there is, uh, maybe you can clarify that uh, some people believe that hip hop for, it's just for size of the size of, the size of Facebook, but uh, we are, for example, working on how we can, whatever side, well, not whatever side, but a slow PHP slide can be yeah, optimized. Yeah, that's, that's, that's something. I mean, everyone, you can run hip-hop on your, on your own server, but probably it makes more sense on, on larger sites, but it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be Facebook size. It, it makes sense for, for smaller, uh, smaller applications as well. A, a lot of packages like WordPress are pretty useless without their plugin architectures. How does that fit in with using Hopar WordPress and then are you still able to use WordPress plugins and that sort of thing? Or is that kind of um, pick and choose beforehand and then? There are actually, well, obviously code that is not compiling on hip hop can't be used. But um, there are already um, quite some plugins that work with uh, hip hop. And um, more and more, uh, as, as WordPress especially pushes more and more towards compatibility of, uh, towards the hip hop engine, um, I, th I hope at least, <laughs> a lot of plugin uh, developers push into that direction as well. I know that um, WordPress itself is really, really interested in hip hop and they, they're definitely from the feedback we've seen, they're definitely moving into, into that direction. So I guess the plugin developers simply either have to catch up or go stale on this platform at least. Hi there. Um, the Parallel 4 extensions that you made, um, do you know if anyone outside of your company is using them or whether like Facebook, for example, are using them at all? Um, we have published them on GitHub. Um, I'm, I don't know if everyone, anyone's using them in production, but I know that a couple of guys have played around with them and um, looked into how we've done them. Um, we obviously uh, fed back our findings and uh, things we did uh, to Facebook and they looked into um, TBB in more detail. So I'm not sure how much of the work that we've done is really going back into hip hop, but we definitely saw some interest in, in the stuff we've done. 
Okay, so the follow-up question to that is, if, if you're not really seeing it going back in, what is Facebook's attitude towards these sort of community contributions? Are they merging them back into hip-hop themselves and then using them? Or this is just sort of like a bit of fragmentation that's happening all throughout the hip-hop community? Um, they take in uh, con community uh, contributions. Um, and they, I think they're really interested in growing a, a community around hip-hop. Um, how much of that really always goes back straight in um, if it is not really touching one of their problems, I'm not sure. But they're quite happy for community um, contributions that fix problems. <laughs> so you see the, sorry, the mailing list, you see a lot of activity on the, on the Facebook developers about the contribution that going back. So it's, uh, the guys who presented Facebook, uh, sorry, hip hop, uh, less than a year ago, you just follow them and they are, every week, they are constantly coming and they are presenting all over the world. So it's a really active, uh, you can see even for their commercial interest. So it's not only for the good of the community, they, uh, I mean, I don't know how big is Facebook in terms of service, I guess that it's really big. Therefore, they have a purely commercial interest also. <laughs> Why not compile straight to machine language? You've got, you've got a parser, I assume. You've got all of the GCC backend stuff. Why the intermediate C++? Um, it's, it gives you a, bit of, a, couple of, a couple of advantages. If things go wrong in the compiler, you still have a reason, uh, in, the, in the parser, you still have a reasonable chance to actually read the source and can actually tweak the source if you have to. Um, and you can compile it to different architectures. So you don't, you're not, if you're really going straight to assembly, um, you're restricted to the architecture you're, you're designing for. And if you, if you change that architecture, you throw away your parser. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, GCC has, does have that system for doing for making languages inside it. Um, well, of course, the project was started by Facebook, um, so it's kind of their architectural d decision to sort of take the simpler path of, well, they can understand changing PHP to C++, yep. and, and that sort of, that means that they don't sort of have to get involved in the compiler internals, that, you know, how much time it would save them and how much faster it would be. Um, yeah, that's just the way they started the project, so we'll work with that. Uh, just a question. Is any Facebook developer here? <laughs> Bugger. <laughs> Once you've hacked your, your WordPress yeah. PHP code to use Parallel 4, can you execute it back on LAMP, and what effect does that have? Um, not in a moment. We've been looking into feeding back a couple of those um, language constructs into standard PHP, but um, we are still working on that one, and I'm not sure when we'll get there. The problem with, um, with that is that core PHP um, threading is, is not really where it could be. I know Sam would probably know more about it, but it's, the, the problem is really that um, core, threading core PHP including all the libraries that hang off it, is really a mission. And it is, it is, it is relatively thread safe-ish, but not quite there that you can just take TBB, hook it into it, and, and, and run it. So fundamentally, if you want to start using hip hop, you're not writing PHP anymore? No, if you, write, if you, if you run on, the, on, the, on a standard hip hop machine uh, uh, engine, everything is fine. Um, if you run on our hacked engine, you can you have s additional syntactic sugar to express different things. And um, if you want to make a portable patch set out of it, you basically have some if def equivalent um, that uh, says if I run on hip hop, I have I can run a for loop like this. Otherwise, I have to run a for loop like this. We have plenty more time, folks. We're 10 minutes ahead of schedule. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, blogging doesn't seem like an inherently like parallel problem. So how, how could you get uh, much of a speed up from parallelizing WordPress? Logging. Hmm. Right. 
So before before um, before these extensions, you weren't able to serve more than one request at a time. Was it? Is that the bottleneck? How, how do you mean? You have obviously more requests, more than one request at a time. If yeah. you if you have a, a busy web server, you have thousands of requests. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, but and the logging, how the logging works then, in parallel or, you can. Blogging. Sys log. Ah, uh, blogging. Ah, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm I'm still struggling a bit. The 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 thing you you have is is something that runs in parallel. Mm -hmm. You you push you, you you use one thread for for the the thing that you're executing, and another thread is working in parallel on I don't know loading your modules to render your page, and then there's another thread that loads another module for your page or another plugin for your page. So one of the one of the for loops that we optimized early on was loading all the plugins that render your site. And um, this can absolutely be done in parallel because there are no side effects. You, you only have to load all the code. And then you end up with the code in memory. Yeah. Um, so the, that, alone, that alone sped up the, the, the page rendering considerably because it's normally a sequential thing where you go through and through and through and through. Yeah, cool. So you, you're still rendering one page. It's just happening in parallel. Any comments on the prospects for Niagara under the new ownership? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the only comment that I can give is... Sorry. <laughs> uh, the only comment that I can mention is what I see on the back page of Business Week, that <laughs> advertising of Oracle about how good they are against IBM, but no, we, we just had a nice relation at the time which um, opened a lot of doors. Uh, in our, I mean, you organize a mini conf with Vince Cerf or Paul McKinney or these guys just because you are creating a nice brotherhood out there. So that was the original part, but that won't happen. That's why I put the board meetings. <laughs> that won't happen when you have uh, stones. <laughs> so. Um, things are happening in a, in a very uh, isolated place. Um, I mean isolated. Mm, this is a change that in one way time it's on our side. It's one, we won't leave this room and say suddenly, oh wow, I need to change my religion. <laughs> I need to forget all what I knew. It's, it's a process. So, and um, yeah. <laughs> so deployment wise, um, how how different is hip hop uh, deploying a, uh, a hip hop instance of WordPress to just doing it on normal PHP? Like obviously things like uh, Apache rewrites and whatnot aren't going to work just the same. Yeah. Um, does it work again? Yeah. Probably that's easier. Um, the deployment process is obviously different. Um, hip hop is uh, has a built-in web server thing that serves the binary, basically. So you don't have to, it's a bit like fast, C, it's, I think it is a fast CGI protocol, actually. No, it's straight HTTP, sorry. It just, um, what, what we've done is we hooked it directly behind Nginx and just ran it behind Nginx as we would any other non-PHP thing. <laughs> That's more my world. <laughs> um, and um, with, with that, um, the, the, the running of the website is, is really restricted to run on that on that engine um, and all the statics for example were in in, in our example ran, uh, served directly by nginx and not by by hip hop there is some support for render, uh, for for pushing static stuff but it is i i wouldn't see any benefit in doing it um, the other thing that you have to think about in in terms of, of deployment is obviously that you're actually deploying a binary now you're not just deploying source codes um, you can deploy source code if you run HPHPI, um, the, the just-in-time compiler, which is still a speed-up. We, we still got a speed-up out of just running HPHPI. Um, but uh, if, you're, if you're compiling, you actually have to think about, if you're compiling in a big scale, you have to think about build farms. You have to think about how do you actually deploy the binaries um, to the different boxes. If you have different architectures, you have to compile for different architectures, things like that. So that becomes slightly more, more complex if you go into a larger scale. But on a smaller scale, um, 
to tinker around, play with HPHPI, just throw your sources at it, and um, if that becomes stable, compile it and uh, push your compiles to to the amount of nodes you have. You How long are you talking in terms of compile times? Like you, you're saying it takes a while and you need a build farm. How long does it take to compile um, WordPress, for example? The compiling compiling uh, hip hop itself takes forever. <laughs> you don't want to recompile it often. <laughs> it really takes forever. But compiling um, the website depends on, on how big it is. Um, I don't know if I have any numbers. Uh, on how long it really took to compile, but it was in the in the amount of minutes. It wasn't like days. <laughs> so it is not huge. It is just if you have if you have 20, uh, 20 servers out there, you don't want to compile it on each server. You really want to compile it on one server and then push it out to the twenty as a binary. Um, have you, with oh. Parallel Four, did you do much in the way of? Ma adding synchronization to other stuff. So can Parallel 4 jobs, say, atomically echo stuff and it's not going to interfere with each other? Or are you, are you just not echoing in Parallel 4 jobs? We're, we're in the moment not echoing in Parallel 4 jobs. <laughs> but you can, it, it is simply threads that run in parallel. Um, we, we didn't have any, uh, any outputs of those things. It was really, all things that were side effect free that didn't really have any output that only returned stuff that wasn't necessary for the next cycle of the of the for loop and this is how we could run that in parallel no other questions one more so, when you translated it to c++ did you see that process introduce any bugs um we haven't found any, so okay. it seems relatively stable. <laughs> but also, we, we've uh, only uh, really used hip hop in a couple of small test things that we made up. So we haven't compiled a huge amount of PHP sources and just uh, looked how how well it performs. But um, the the hip hop guys are pretty onto it to make it bug free. <laughs> Facebook's pretty big too. Yes, <laughs> that code base alone probably pushed it pretty far already. <laughs> well, thank you very much. That's been very informative. I very much apologize for my complete ignorance of the topic. <laughs> and we've enjoyed the talk, so thank you. Thanks.